Today on The Hookup, I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know and every step you need to take in order to create your first holiday LED music and light show. Holiday light shows aren't exactly new, but they used to require so much technical know-how that they were only attempted by electronics wizards. Fast forward to 2019 and the process has been simplified and the options and capabilities expanded to the point where even a novice can put together an impressive light show in under a week. This video is going to cover the absolute basics of holiday light shows to get you started in time for this year's big season. This video came out a bit longer than I was expecting, so feel free to use these timestamps to jump around in the video to the parts that you're interested in. First, let's talk about the stars of the show, the LEDs. In this department, you've got a lot of choices, but here are some generally accepted rules to make informed decisions before you buy. If you're going to be moving your props around and taking them down every year, you should probably use individual LED pixels instead of LED strips. LED strips are great for more permanent setups because they're cheaper per pixel, easier to install, and they can achieve a more cohesive look due to their higher pixel density. But they don't do well with being moved around, and if an LED burns out, it's much more difficult to replace a single LED in a strip than a single LED in a string. The 5 volt versus 12 volt debate has gone on for a long time. But here's the easy answer. If your runs are short, like 50 pixels or less, then 5 volt LEDs will look great and consume significantly less power than their 12 volt counterparts. If you have long runs, then 12 volt strands will allow you to achieve greater brightness without losing color accuracy due to voltage drop. No matter which voltage you choose, if you're going to do very long runs, you will need to inject power, but the 12 volt strands are going to require less. For pixel type, there are tons of options, but 99% of holiday light shows are done with either WS2811 or WS2812B pixels. If you want to know more about the differences between these chips, I made a whole video on it. But your light show is probably going to end up with RGB WS2811 pixels the vast majority of the time. Addressable LEDs are useless without something to send data to them. We call these devices pixel controllers, and just like the LEDs, you've got quite a few options. So here's a quick breakdown. If you're just going to be messing around in your office or a single small prop, you might want to start out with an open source controller like an ESP8266 based node MCU running ES Pixel Stick or WLED. This is a great way to get started because you can get the hang of the concepts for very little money, and you may even be able to limp through a small show. But chances are you're going to want to upgrade to a wired controller sooner rather than later. There's quite a bit of competition in the world of wired pixel controllers, and I don't claim to have used every controller type, but here's my opinion of some of the most common controllers. If you're looking for super DIY and cheap, you can get a kit for the Sand Devices E682 16 port controller for just $109. But when I say kit, I mean kit. The components come in bags with an unpopulated PCB, and you're going to need to assemble and solder it yourself. If that's your idea of a fun Friday night, then go for it. But even for a seasoned solderer like myself, I'd prefer to pay a little bit more and skip the assembly step. The most popular controller on the market is the Falcon F16 V3. It'll cost you $200 and it has 16 ports expandable up to 48 with the optional differential receiver modules. The Falcon has excellent integration with X lights and it supports more LEDs per output than any other board. It's a really good choice for someone who wants to dig into the hobby and learn all about sequencing. On the opposite end of the spectrum from the Sand Devices kit are the ready to run kits from companies like Holiday Coro that pre-assemble a Hinx Pix Pro controller, a power supply, watertight enclosure, and 16 waterproof lighting pigtails to get you started quickly and easily. The pre-assembled packages lower the learning curve significantly and allow you to get up and running much quicker. If you're worried about having enough time to set up your lights, or you don't want to do all the wiring yourself, then these pre-assembled kits definitely allow you to exchange a little bit of your money for a lot of your time. I personally have both a Falcon controller and a Hinks Pix Pro, and the great news is that picking one controller type doesn't lock you into a specific ecosystem, because these controllers all speak a common language called E131. Speaking of E131, it's time to get some vocabulary out of the way. And in all honesty, this is the most confusing part of the hobby, so I'm going to try to be as succinct as possible. This pile of lights is called a pixel string or strand. The strand contains 50 pixels. That's these things. Inside each of these pixels is a red LED, green LED, and blue LED, and turning them on at different brightnesses allows a pixel to generate over 16 million unique colors. 
Because each of these red, green, and blue subpixels are controlled individually, that means that a single pixel actually contains three controllable channels, red, green, and blue. And that means that my 50 pixel strand actually contains 150 E131 channels. In order to be controlled, these channels need to be assigned to something called a universe, which is a terrible name for what it actually is, an addressable group of 512 channels. Because of this channel limit, a medium to large show will include dozens of universes. You don't have to have 512 channels in a universe, that's just the maximum. In fact, you'll see that by default, most universes only have 510 channels defined, not 512. And that's because 512 is not divisible by 3, but 510 is. If you have more than 170 pixels in a run, it's going to require more than one universe to hold them. But that doesn't really matter because these controllers can output multiple universes per port. So to recap, three channels makes a pixel, 170 pixels can fit in a universe, and controllers can output multiple universes per output connection. Now that you're an expert on LEDs, controllers, and E131 terminology, you can start thinking about your show's individual elements or props. Are you going to have LEDs on your windows and roof line, or are you going to stick to ground-based props? Are you going to have one main focus of your show, like a mega tree, or are you going to have a bunch of small things? If you're just getting into the hobby, I highly recommend that you don't try to do it all at once. Don't attempt to make a show that's visible from space your very first year. Instead, you can add a little more each year as you get more confident with the process. This also helps keep the cost reasonable since you'll just be adding a little bit more each year. My first year, I permanently installed LED strips on my roofline, built an LED wreath out of PEX tubing, and made some simple animations using sheet microcontrollers. Last year, I made PVC frames for my doors and windows to be able to easily put up and take down my seasonal lights, and I sequenced my first LED light show in X lights. This year, in honor of YouTube's Team Trees initiative, I'm going to be adding a few mini trees and a 13-foot mega tree to my show using the kits from Holiday Coro. I've also made a deal with Holiday Coro to donate my commission to the Team Trees initiative here on YouTube. So if you use the links down in the description, you'll be helping plant real trees as well as electronic ones. To put the mega tree together, your first step is going to be to spend roughly two hours pushing pixels through their mounting strips to create a total of 16 different strips. I left one open hole at the top and five at the bottom, but you may want to leave more room at the bottom to increase your ground clearance if you get a lot of snow. Make sure that the end with the connector is on the side with the five open holes and not the side with the one open hole. A good pair of work gloves is an absolute must for this process. Next, you'll need to head to your local big box store and pick up around 100 feet of rope, 20 landscaping stakes, and two 10-foot lengths of fencing top rail. These items added around $50 to the cost of my project. I wanted my tree to be 13 feet tall, and I wanted to hammer 3 feet of the pole into the ground for stability. So I cut my piece of top rail to 6 feet, picked a location, and started hammering. The mega tree comes with a milled plastic top piece that has slots to hold the pixel mounting strips using zip ties. Put each strip into the top mounting plate, making sure that the pixels are facing outwards, and tie on some lengths of rope to act as guy wires. Slip the mounting plate over the top of the uncut piece of rail and lift it on top of the section that you pounded into the ground. In this step, it's helpful to have a second set of hands here to untangle the strips while you hold the pole in place. On the bottom of each strip, there's a strain relief piece that gets attached by looping the strip around and securing it with a few zip ties. I ended up needing to install my strain relief pieces backwards because the landscaping sticks that I chose were a bit too large to fit through the other hole. Pull each strip taut and stake it into the ground. You can do fancy math here to figure out how far apart each strip should be, but after trying to use a tape measure for the first few strips, I just eyeballed the rest. Since this mega tree has 16 strands and the controller has 16 outputs, you just screw together the pre-attached waterproof connectors in sequential order and your wiring is done. Because each run is only 50 pixels, there's no need to run power injection, so the wiring is literally as simple as it could possibly be. Now that the tree is up, we need to wire our controller, which just needs AC power and Ethernet. The Hinxpix Pro controller can be controlled directly from a computer's Ethernet port, or it can be connected to a router or switch. I suggest that you connect it to your home network using a long Ethernet cable, since the controller has automatic firmware updates whenever it's connected to the internet. The controller also has a nice on-screen display to let you do some testing and troubleshooting, and it's also where you can select if you want your controller to automatically get an IP address from your network, or if you want to force it onto a specific IP address. If you don't know what this means, then you probably want to choose the DHCP option. Once connected to a network, the controller will show its IP address on the LCD panel. You should write it down. 
If you absolutely can't wait, you can also use the controller to make your mega tree light up for the first time. But we're pretty much ready to do that remotely, so just hang tight. Start to finish the construction of this mega tree took me just over four hours. And when I decided I was going to make a mega tree, I was expecting more like 15 hours of work. So being ready to sequence so soon was a very welcome surprise. The next step involves a program called XLights. So go down to the link in the description, download it, and install. Step one in XLights is to choose the directory on your computer that will be your show directory. This is really important, so make sure that you remember where you put it. Next, you need to add your controller. So in the Setup tab, click Add E131, then select Unicast and type the IP address of your controller. If this is your first prop, you can start at Universe 1, but once your show gets bigger, you'll want to make sure that your props don't have overlapping universes. On the Megatree, you have 16 strands of 50 pixels connected to 16 different outputs. So for number of universes, you'll put 16, and since 50 pixels makes up 150 channels, you'll put 150 as the last channel. Press OK, and then press Save Setup. Next, we just need to double check the output settings on the controller. If you ordered the standard Megatree package from Holiday Coro, those settings should be pre-populated. But if you ordered an extra expansion board, they may be different. So head over to the IP address of your controller and select E131 Artnet. On this screen, you'll confirm that your settings reflect what we did in XLights. So in this case, universes 1 through 16, 150 channels per universe. You'll see that this says that it's going to output from controller start channel 1. So we need to make sure that start channel 1 is mapped to the correct output. So click on output settings, SPI ports, and ensure that the start channel 1 is mapped to the beginning of the first port, and pixel count for each channel is 50. Then just press auto calc start channel and press save. To activate your settings, you'll need to go to the reset menu and press the big red reset button. At this point, you should be all set up, and it's time to test out your lights. So click on Tools, and then Test. Then select one or all of the outputs in your E131 profile you just made, and then click on Background Only, and move the background brightness slider up, and your tree should light up. Assuming that all went to plan, it's time to tell X-Lights what our props look like. So hit Save, and then go over to the Layout tab. An accurate layout is very important for making your show look its best. So go outside of the position where most people will be watching your show and take a fresh picture. Import the picture you just took as a background and then mess with the brightness and transparency until you can barely see the outline of your house. Next, select the Megatree tool and draw your Megatree as close to the actual size and location as possible. Once you have it placed, you'll need to edit the details. The one from Holiday Coro is round shape, 180 degrees, and 16 strings of light with 50 LEDs per string. I plugged output one of my controller into the bottom left side of my tree, and I want Universe 1 Channel 1 as my starting channel. After pressing save, the prop is ready. Now it's time to sequence. And in my opinion, sequencing is an absolute art form, and for as many hours as I've spent in X-Lights, I still don't feel completely happy with the sequences that I've produced myself. The great news is that much like computer programming, you can get pretty far just borrowing code from other people. Xlights has a maintained Google Drive of user-shared sequences that you can browse through. Some may be your style and some may not, but the point is that they're there and they're free for you to use. To get started, you're going to download a show. So follow the link in the description and find a song you like. I'm going to use my favorite example, which is Santa Claus is Coming to Town by Skiwiff, and it was sequenced by Jason Rasmussen. Extract the zip file into a folder on your computer and then go back to Xlights. Next, in the Setup tab, click Change Show Directory, and then select the folder that you just extracted the sequence show to. You should see someone else's controllers and props populate into the Setup and Layout tab. Next, click on Sequence and choose File, Open Sequence. Then select the XML file for the show. Then click the Render button and press Play and enjoy the show. But while you're enjoying, pay attention to which props have a lot of effects associated with them on the timeline, and write down the total number of props from this show that you want to use in your own. After you've watched the fantastic show, go to the Setup tab, and then change back to your show folder. In the Layout tab, since we only have one prop, we want to give ourselves more places to import effects. So if you decided that you wanted to import three props from the sequence show, you're going to need to add two additional groups, and then just add your prop into those groups and hit Save. Next, click File, New Sequence, select Musical Sequence, and grab the music file from the SkiWiff folder. Choose 20 FPS and hit Quick Start. Next is the magic part. Go to Import, Import Effects, and select the Sequence Shows XML file. 
On the right, you'll see all the props from the sequence show, and on the left, you'll see all of your props and groups. Just click and drag effects into their corresponding groups, and then hit OK. After your import, press Render, and click on a model or group on the timeline, and press Play to preview your show. If your effects overlap in a way that you don't really like, you can click on an element and choose Edit Display Elements. In this screen, you can add additional groups or move layers up and down. In Xlight's layers are rendered from the top to the bottom, so stuff at the bottom of the list will overwrite stuff at the top of the list. Once you're completely happy with your sequence and setup, just save, then press play and hit that little bulb on the end that says Output to Lights. Then run outside and watch your breathtaking new megatree dance to the music. So that's it, a start to finish megatree in under five hours. I've seen my neighbors take longer than that to staple icicle lights to their eaves. I'll be doing one more video this season on holiday light shows, teaching more about making custom props, scheduling shows, integrating them with Home Assistant, and transmitting your music via FM radio. But if you can think of an absolutely crucial subject that I've missed, make sure to let me know down in the comments so I can include it. If you're completely new to LEDs, I'd encourage you to check out my LED playlist to learn a little bit more about different types, power injection, and some tips and tricks for successful and long-lasting installations. Thank you to all my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of both my channel and my LED obsession. If you're interested in supporting, check out the links down in the description. If you're interested in supporting the environment, as I mentioned earlier, Holiday Coro has offered me a commission for any props that are purchased via my links. And I'll be donating 100% of those commissions between now and January 1st to the YouTube Team Trees Initiative. So constructing your mega tree can help plant real trees as well. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.